Hey guys. Uh, in this video, I'll be talking about three really powerful lessons that I've learned throughout life uh, that I wish were emphasized more in our traditional school system. Uh, I'll just try to keep this video short and sweet. If you like this stuff, be sure to let me know. Perhaps I'll return and make it into a series. So that being said, I've learned a lot of information in school. I was taking a pretty serious curriculum in high school. It was nearly all APIB courses. And I continued on that path in college um, until I started to realize a lot of stuff they teach you in college and that I learned previously in grade school is not often used in the real world. And I wish they emphasized some more important life skills. So that's what I'm gonna be talking about here. So also a, a preface to this video, the first thing I wanna say is our school system is kind of like the military. Uh, just to kind of explain that, uh, obviously to a lesser extent, but you're basically encouraged to give up your willpower uh, and follow their protocol. It's, it's kind of like turning creative humans more into like order taking machines. So that's the first thing I have a problem with in our school system. But just continuing on, uh, I'm not sure if you guys know right now in our current college education system, at least in the US, we have a student loan bubble. And I'll be making a video on that specifically later on. But uh, basically, it's crazy. I feel really bad for a lot of my peers and stuff in college because they're taking their credit, essentially, their buying power, and they're burning it up before these kids even have a chance to buy a house or something like that. So, uh, yeah, uh, just as far as education goes, uh, let me put it to you this way. So I would rather have YouTube, Wikipedia, and the Internet at large today rather than the best universities 20 years ago. You know, any of the best universities or all of them even. The world has changed a lot uh, in the past 20 years or whatnot. And this is something I feel like a lot of the older generation people still haven't understood yet. Um, I'm pretty sure the younger generation, we kind of get this, but a lot of older people still think, you know, it becomes a question of whether you're going to college for a degree or the diploma. Because if we're just talking about the education, uh, I think it's far better on, you know, through internet sources. To give an example of that, I was looking at taking a course at my local university. Uh, I had only one option for a class I was interested in. Uh, this was from a professor who was getting ratings of about two and a half stars out of five stars. And that's who I would have been forced to be taught by. Uh, meanwhile, I could go online, look up the same topics on YouTube and find videos that are rated with 99% positive ratings. I think that's far better. So if we're talking about the quality of education, I think that that is a far better route. But continuing on to the main point of this video, the three lessons I want to talk about. So the most important, or actually, excuse me, these are all really important. But the first one I want to talk about, which is a huge lesson, is that family and business don't mix. Uh, I don't know why this isn't emphasized or taught in school, but business and personal life need to have a separation. Business and family need to have a separation. And to make this point, I'll share my experience briefly. So years ago, I made a company. Uh, I brought my brother into it. I love my brother dearly. And we had a third quote unquote friend in it. He was an okay friend to me. He was a close friend to my brother and he was a family friend too. So long story short, uh, the business wasn't working. I wanted to split ways and we all agreed to keep the business as it was until we figured out what to do. But then this third, person, uh, he essentially stole critical parts of the business, which I needed to con continue, continue on, excuse me, and do it on my own. So I demanded that he return those parts. He refused to do it illegally. Um, I realized that I could make a big deal out of it and get what was mine, but because he created a new, a new company with my brother, uh, it would have created a big family feud. So I, I essentially just let it go out of love for my family. I let it go. So I let myself uh, essentially be screwed over because of the love of my family. So fast forward a few years, uh, he ended up screwing over my brother too. So now this guy is despised by my whole family. But at the time when this was going on, there was nothing I could do. It's not, it's not really a pleasant story and I don't like to talk about it much, but I wanted to share it with you guys so you can learn from it. I wish I, I wish someone told me or I read this in a book or, or something like that where I could get clarity on this before I got involved in doing that. So that's why I'm sharing it with you. Again, just a huge lesson. 
So just to elaborate a little bit, uh, imagine if you have a problem or a misunderstanding uh, with a family member who you're doing business with. Say you want to split ways because it's not working out. They might not, they might not split it the way you want it to, or they might take crucial parts of the business without consent, without your consent or any kind of process, due process. So, and what are you going to do about that? It's family. You have to let it go. If it wasn't family, you could fight the good fight of justice and fairness, but because it's family, you don't want to bring that bad blood or dispute or disagreement around family. So hopefully that, I don't know if you guys see that, but it's critical. Uh, in the end, family is a sacred thing. When you go home, when you go to the dinner table with your family, you want to feel love and be free. You don't want to be tainted by uh, you know, bad business or disputes or anything like that or any kind of business really. You just want to be able to relax. And just to add on this too, uh, I take a ton of notes and, and whatnot. Whenever I record notes or journals and I'm, and I'm tagging them, I keep my money related notes and my non-money related notes separate. Uh, I feel like this relates to this. It's, it's a similar thing. It's, I feel like it's the difference of doing something out of pure love and doing something for the purpose of generating money. Whether we like it or not, uh, as, as is the current status quo of our society, we're essentially required to work. So not to say it's a bad thing or anything, don't get me wrong, we're super blessed in this day and age more than ever, but I just wanted to make that clarity that there sh should probably be a separation between the two. It is somewhat common knowledge as well. You know, there are sayings like, don't shit where you eat or, uh, doing things for pleasure, doing things for business, but it might not be made super clear. So I just wanted to share that I keep those things separate uh, at this point. So just to close this first lesson again, I will say, uh, I don't think mixing family and business is a good idea at all, unless you're willing to give up the whole thing. Uh, for me personally, I couldn't afford to give it up. And so I paid a price for that. Uh, and again, I share this out of love. Uh, nobody really made it clear to me, uh, not that I blame anyone or anything like that, but I wanted to share it with you guys in hopes that it's a clear warning to you or so you guys can uh, gain from my experience something that isn't very commonly taught. If you guys want more details on it or something like that, just let me know. Uh, but definitely, please heed this lesson. Right, very well. So the second thing, the second really important thing that isn't taught in the education system very much at all is the law of attraction. So I think this is one of the most undervalued things, uh, just all in all, that's it's not taught or emphasized on. It's I, I can't. It's hard to even think of a class where it comes up a lot. Maybe it's touched on a little bit, but it's definitely not a cornerstone of our education system, which I think it should be. So I'm just going to share a couple sources uh, of this. One is Goals by Brian Tracy, an excellent book. Uh, highly recommend it. He says in that book, I paraphrase. If I were to teach just one thing, it would be the value of setting goals, reviewing them, and visualizing them. He also said somewhere else, I'm not sure if it was in that book or somewhere else, but he said he studied all the great leaders, and the one thing they had in common was uh, they would all visualize their goals and their successes. So I think that's really important. There's also the movie The Secret, a really a great movie. It emphasized this, the law of attraction. You become what you think about. Earl Nightingale, who's a great teacher, uh, he recorded a clip called The Strangest Secret in the World, and that talks about this, essentially saying the same thing. Uh, Napoleon Hill, who wrote Think and Grow Rich, it's an extremely good book, uh, and countless other people too, like Carnegie. It's pretty common knowledge among successful and powerful people, but again, hardly emphasized in our school system, which I think it, it should be a cornerstone of anyone's education. So... And just to add as well, there was a study on a Harvard graduating class. I think it was the 1980 business class. And they were looking at how many people from that class set goals. I think it was like 10%. And that's just crazy to me. When you take such a strenuous curriculum, goal setting, visualizing goals should be a, a tremendous part of that. But clearly, you know, at least it wasn't in the past. And I, I feel like it still really isn't uh, in much of the education system. So just to add... One more thing too on this point, The Secret discusses this stuff really well. I love that movie. Um, to kind of summarize the ideas from that movie, what they say is essentially to feel good, uh, think about things that feel good, visualize your goals uh, and your successes that you want to do, and 
again, use your feelings as a guidance system. Uh, just make sure you feel really good. Uh, you know, if you have a good feeling, follow that. Or uh, if you're not so sure, try to turn it into something that feels good or meditate perhaps to find clarity on what you really want. Uh, again, and what feels good. It's just a good philosophy toward life and success in general, I'd say. Right on. So the third thing I want to talk about is the value of listening to your feelings. This is the third major lesson, which I feel like is not taught in the school systems. So I consider this one of the most important, if not the most important thing that I've learned in life. So I remember as a kid, I experimented with this when I wasn't feeling very well. Like if I felt bad because I was being dragged down by some, some mental thoughts, I would think about what thoughts would be bothering me. So let's say there was a couple things that were kind of bugging me. I would ask myself if, let's say if situation A was, was better, would I feel better? Uh, if not, I would ask if situation B was better, would I feel a lot better? And for most of these, you know, you would feel a little better if certain things were better, but there was usually one thing that stood out that if that was better, you would just feel way better or relieved or something like that. So in doing this, it helped me identify what was really bugging me and would help me, then I could work on that thing, that thing that bugged me the most. Uh, so that, that was some, some cool thing I just kind of learned for myself when I was younger. Unfortunately, these kinds of skills were never emphasized in school. Uh, I never, I didn't take it too seriously or consciously view it as really important because it wasn't emphasized upon in school and so many other things were. Uh, and because of that too, you know, and I don't think I'm alone here, but I kind of unconsciously undervalued my feelings throughout the remainder of my K through 12 schooling. Uh, most of my decisions and whatnot, I'd go by logic or reason, uh, what I could see and understand basically, which I now believe is a mistake because I feel like our feelings understand, uh, understand things better than, than we can see. So uh, it was when I was 18 years old, I saw the movie The Secret, then I got reawakened to my feelings and you know listening to my feelings a lot better. But again, I wish I wish I understood that better when I was going through my younger school years or whatnot. So yeah, uh, I just want to say again that we're we're really blessed. Uh, so I don't I'm not spiteful or anything about it. I in fact I'm really grateful for everything I have. I'm sharing this again with with you guys out of love. So hopefully it's helpful to you. Um, I just feel like this stuff is hardly ever taught. Uh, at least not officially by schools. We kind of we got we get hints of this through our experience, but again, it's not really emphasized a whole bunch. So, uh, and again, I'm just sharing it with you guys. Hopefully, hopefully it helps you guys in some way. In closing, I would say, if there was a newborn baby and I could convey two messages to him, the first thing is I would convey to him is trust your feelings, and the second thing I would convey is pick things that feel good. Uh, and just to add on to that, picking things that feel good, uh, there's what's called mental alchemy, where you can turn lead into gold. You know, Just because something doesn't feel good doesn't mean you have to go by that. That is our power, that we can change anything from something that feels bad into something that feels better. And just day to day, I mean, there's a ton of little things that we can do to look at the bright side or, or focus on gratitude or realize what we have. And I try to practice that as much as possible. Um, of course, it wouldn't hard to do it more either. So yeah, those are the two most important things though, I would say, uh, trust your feelings, pick things and pick things that feel good, but use mental alchemy to help yourself feel good as you need to. So that's basically the gist of it. I just wanted to share this with you guys. Uh, if you like it, be sure to like it uh, or subscribe. Uh, and if you really like it, let me know. I can elaborate on some of these points or make another video of some other important lessons I've learned. Uh, yeah, just let me know. I, either way, I wish you guys the best. Have a great day and be well. See ya.